Today I'm going to take you through five steps to a perfect Romanian deadlift to build your glutes, hamstrings and improve your flexibility. Before we even grab onto a bar, we need to make sure you know how to hinge your hips effectively so you don't put a load into your lower back. So the Romanian deadlift is all about pulling your hips as far back horizontally as possible as opposed to bending forwards at the waist. You can see a pretty obvious difference there, but a lot of people mess this up and that leads to them feeling a lot more than they should through their lower back. So a simple cue that I like to use is to imagine that you're carrying a bunch of groceries in from the car, you've stepped out and you need to close the door behind you using your hips. That butt back motion is the exact motion that you want to try to emulate when you've got the barbell in your hands here. So the motion is butt going backwards with your legs as straight as possible, though a slight bend in them is completely fine, as opposed to me bending straight forwards like this. So the next step is to use wrist straps to help lock in your grip. No matter how strong your grip is, if you're doing any kind of actual working weights here on the remaining deadlift, you'll always find grip to be the limiting factor. And you don't want your glutes and hamstrings to be limited by your grip strength. So instead of thinking about it as a hit to your ego if you don't use straps, I think of it more as if you don't need to use straps, you're probably not using anywhere near your true potential weight on Romanian deadlifts. And you can definitely stand to push yourself a lot harder on this exercise. So the next step you'll see here is I'm loading this up in a rack. This is gonna help to save me a lot of energy from having the deadlift bar off the ground. So set up at about waist height, I'm strapped in, lifting off and stepping straight back and going into some reps now. So I'm thinking butt going back to shut the door behind me, hip straight forwards. Butt back, hit the door behind me closed, come straight back up. So the next step I'm thinking about here is when I push my hips back, it's not just pushing them back behind me as far as possible. I'm also thinking about trying to pull my hips back and up towards the back top corner of the room. This tiny technique adjustment doesn't necessarily change much visually, but internally, I feel my hamstring stretching out so much more as I'm thinking about pulling my butt right back and up behind me. And the final thing I'm thinking about here is how I'm putting pressure through my feet. A big mistake I used to make was thinking about screwing my feet outwards the entire time and pushing more weight through the outside of my foot or even just my heels. And this really wound up limiting the amount of range of motion I got out of the exercise. Instead, what I'm trying to think about here is as I come down into the bottom of the deadlift, letting my feet roll inward slightly into what's called pronation, as this really lets me stretch out my glutes that much more and push my hips out a lot further. And then as I come up, I'm thinking about pushing hard through the middle of my foot, around the ball of my foot, and thrusting my hips forwards. Because of the mechanics of the lift, you might find yourself shifting them back a little bit more towards your heels, and that's perfectly fine as well. But what I really recommend you do is think about the inside edge of your foot as opposed to the outside edge of your foot you'll often find you get a lot more range and a lot more power out of the exercise by doing it this way. So just so you can see the visual differences here, I'm gonna do this rep here with my feet screwing outwards into the ground and pulling more through the outside edge of my foot, just like this. And what you'll find is at this point here, this is where I feel my hamstrings tensioning a lot and a kind of a nervy, stretchy sensation through the back of my legs. Whereas on this set, I'm not gonna think about pushing out through the outside edges of my foot or screw my feet apart. I'm gonna let my weight distribute wherever it feels most comfortable, which you'll find is a lot more through the middle of the foot and maybe through the heels as you lower yourself down a little bit more towards the bottom ranges. So by doing this, what you'll see is I'm able to get a lot more range of motion to the point where I've had to now stand up on a deficit to make sure the plates aren't hitting the ground and I'm able to really stretch out and open up through my glutes and my hamstrings to really train those muscles in their end range positions. This is going to put them under a lot more tension and get them a lot stronger and help to build some more muscle and flexibility in this range of motion. And that's about it. You don't need to overcomplicate this too much whatsoever. Just think about those five main steps. From there, there are some minor things you can do like playing with your stance width a little bit more or maybe thinking about how your pelvis is positioned, whether you arch your back a little bit more or a little bit less. But those things are really dependent on your own structure and your own comfort. So feel free to play around with those things and find what works best for you. Hope you found that helpful. I've got to get back to training now, but if there are any other exercises you want some more technique tips on, drop in the comments below. And if you want to watch another video, check one out over here.